Welcome back to another victory video. This is actually going to be a part two to a video that we already did with Coach Degatano. So if you haven't seen part one yet, we'll link it up right above here. You can check that out. But this is all going to be about developing a tackling system for your team. So check it out. Let us know what you think. What I kind of like put together is really something that sits on top of your system. And when you develop a system, it's not for me to say what your system should be, but these are kind of the things I look at with it. You know, it should always be simple. Um, it should solve problems, especially when you're evaluating it, focusing on skills. Safety is obviously a, a priority and simulation of situations they're going to be in. And then obviously the stealing of other ideas. And uh, I don't even just steal it from tackling. You steal, I steal it from anything. Like you could find, like I could find two things crossing each other uh, at a rapid pace and I could find, figure something out, uh, you know. I see boats sometimes getting anchored to the ground, and I think about roll tackles. So that's kind of like how I deal uh, when it comes down to it. But uh, everybody's got a similar in the tackle system, right? You're, you know, you get to the ball, you get in position, you make contact, get the carrier down. It's pretty standard what it is. And then there's really football non-negotiables and blocking, tackling, getting and keeping the ball are really what the game is. Um, you know, I've kind of found interesting and just kind of is always about – I'll always kind of say something somewhat different whenever I'm talking about this because it's constantly something I'm thinking about. But I probably learned more recently and, and evolved my system more recently that we have from watching offensive line coaches clinic and talk because there's really nothing that you have that takes five guys and at the same position, the same position coach, and has to go ahead and come together and make – a group of, of, of skills that come together and they have to have everyday drills that evolve around those skills and they could, and they have to bucket them all and there couldn't be more uh, unique things that they have to know within there. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, defensively, we, from a basis, like we really do that with 11 guys every play. So, you know, I kind of, when you, when you really watch an offensive line coach and I've had the opportunity now to work for a really great offensive line coach as a head coach. And I've worked with some other guys who are offensive line coaches that are head coaches and, when I really, you really take advantage of being able to see their style when it comes to it, because their mindset is always around that, and you you evolve into that a little bit, little by little. And but thing that we always talk about, we kind of always talk about the tackler when it comes to it, um, when it comes to tackling, and the tackler might in fact be the last thing we talk about when it comes to tackling, believe it or not, to not just be like basic fundamental skills. Yes, if you're learning them. Yes, if you're learning space and time. Yeah, that's that's always that's essential. But like, when you get to a certain level, high school, college, and, and beyond that, like, kind of like create more situations. So you look at like end of plays and where it is in the formation, where it is on the field, in relationship to the fits and the and the distribution on the pass, and then you look at like other things like the ball character characteristics, like you know what positions they play, you know where on the body you're making contact, some like stuff like that, and. Really, when you come back to it too, you, then you start looking at the tackler and you start talking about, you know, the, you know what shoulder they're hitting with and where they're engaging the block. So some of these things like really can help to design what you're doing, um, and they've taken some time for me. Just this is one thing I think about. So I'm not really a science guy. I wouldn't classify myself as that. But when you really think about what you're trying to do in tackle, right? Really think about it. You're really trying to take these two dynamics, these two formulas. You're trying to apply pressure. So you're trying to squeeze something into a very small space, and you're trying to get as much of your body on it as possible and drive it backwards at the same time, right? So think about those two things, right? Like when you're thinking about it, like, you know, you think about like, in essence, like the pressure part formula is force over area is really the tracking of the ball. And then you take that force piece that's in there, right? And then you transition it and you create what is really – that you really funnel it down once you're really close to somebody. So, right. And you say, well, it's force. And you go, well, it's as much of mass times acceleration. So for, for me, like the massive part of your body in tackling is always going to be your shoulder. Right. What we did was what we did was kind of create this like um, mantra for it too because we said, what are we about when it comes to tackling? And a lot of it starts with, uh, you know, we play gap and a half defense, and that's really – it's a lot, of, a lot of defensive philosophy in there. Owning our leverage, right? So you see the words that we're using are, like, really, like, dynamic. Like, mm -hmm. so we don't really talk as much about tracking. We talk a lot more about leverage, right? And we talk about bursting to the ball, and bursting really comes from the evolution of Paul Rice, our defensive coordinator, um, uses the word – we use the word burst a lot, right? Vision burst is a big one. Vision burst. See it and see it and burst to it. See it and burst to it. So instead of us kind of like 
having this term that's in isolation out here, like we built off a term that is a, a belief of the coordinator because that ultimately that's really where it's coming down to is yeah. the guy who's going to call the plays, you need to kind of know where his mind is. And we evolved it, what we were doing into that, and it's no longer, like you notice, there's not words like near foot, near shoulder in here, like we're talking about. There's not words like tracking in here. Yes, they're skills that we teach, believe me. You'll hear enough near foot, near shoulder when we talk about the teaching side of it and some of the coaching points in it. But like when we're talking about like what are we, you know, we built everything off of it. And that's like why I get to us with the year round thing is like you got to be iron. You got to be like kind of you got to be kind of like anchored to something right. like you got to be like, what is it that we're doing? And then, you know, big, big term about taking our shot. You know, there is such thing as a productive miss. You know, like what happens if you're if you're, you know, rather than sitting back and, you know, we talk about the fact that we got to go ahead and take our shot and the strike zone uh, through the strike zone of the body. And um, dent and disrupt is a huge thing with us because we want to change the shape and form of the ball carrier. And we also are we're writing into what our mantra is the football like the, we want to disrupt the football yeah. at every time we have. So we're writing that into like our, our tackling mantra. And then we want, and then our non-negotiable is, I know some people calculate yards after contact. I really don't, right. to be honest with you. I stopped doing it only because if I'm on top of you facing the goal line, you can't have yards after contact. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and coach, one of the big things I'm taking away from this too is just the, and I know the big bolded letters obviously jump out, but all those big bold letters are actionable items, right? Bursting, dent and disrupt, finishing on top, facing the goal line. So if I'm reading this as a player, at least I can take, like when I, you say the word burst, I think of quick, fast, and now, right? Dent is, I'm trying to, when you put a dent in anything, you hit it hard enough where it's going to leave a mark, right? And um, so from a systems overview, uh, and this is, again, this kind of goes into like, everybody's kind of got some stuff with this, but this is basically the systems overview you use. The terms we use like are very actionable words. And I like the, I like the fact to use actionable because I use that all the time. Like, mm. so we look at like leverage, you know, as opposed to tracking, tracking is, you know, more the coaching of it, it's yeah. more the drilling of it. Whereas we're constantly preaching to the players leverage and, you know, assignment key, uh, uh, assignment stance, key and read is actually one of our actionable things that we tied into like leverage, right? So if you're lined up wrong, you've already started wrong, you know, so a lot of people don't think that way when it comes to tackling and that's why when we look at from a systems overview like we're always trying to talk about like like when we're talking about leverage with every walk through drill is a tackling drill because it's always a leverage drill yeah like every time you're on the board and lining up it's always a leverage drill and here's a big thing like i talked about eyes on target right and you know um big on eyes on targets everything really has to talk about, about eyes and feet talking to one another and it's funny because you kind of think about this. If you kind of think about this from a perspective, the further you are away from the ball, the furthest two parts of your body have to communicate with each other. There's a lot of work that has to get done with that. So you talk about eyes on target and obviously closing space, angles, and then change the direction off that. So I, I have listened to a lot of people. I've probably said it. I've never been really into come to balance. So what we kind of evolved into is controlled balance, which controlled balance speaks a little higher. Like your your controlled balance on leverage is I'm moving towards the ball under control. Uh, I, I had a coach. Know. I had a coach too that always used to say, uh, "Don't break down. You want to throttle down because when you break down, a car breaks down and right. it doesn't stop. But throttle down, you know, you want to slow the car down just a little bit, but you're still driving forward. You know, square to strike. Like, and really the most important thing is the top. Everything we do is about being square." Like we gotta get square. Cause like I told you before, it's mass time, mass times acceleration equals force. Like square is gonna be much more stronger than anything else. So we're trying to stay square to the ball carrier and be able to strike through them. Like we're if we're square and they work in the opposite direction, then you know you're just making it easier on us. Um shoulder instead of shoulder contact, we actually use this term play behind your pads. So, you know, we're always talking about playing behind your pads and being able to hit with your pads and things like that. Um, deliver the punch on contact. We're a foot in the hoop is a little bit more of, you know, and I'd steal it from some people with the Madden circle because I think it's going to associate with that. We want to get our foot in their Madden circle. Um, and then we talk about the different types of takeoffs, right? So there's a double leg for inline. There's a single leg for at an angle, uh, maybe more open field-ish kind of square stuff. And then, then the run through from the chase. So I think there's, and I'll talk about this difference between clamp and grip. Mm -hmm. So grip is really with your hands as much as clamp is with your elbows and squeezing from the lats. We do some vertical punch from two to one, and that's really four when we're engaged. I'll touch on that. 
denting and disrupt ball disruption are part of our clamp. And then we talk about rolling over feet, right? And not, you know, and keeping our feet in the ground is, is a key and then leg drive. And then this is where I kind of get to the anchor part, anchoring hips, because when an object is moving away from you, so, and, and uh, Chip from uh, Triple H, kind of, I know he doesn't teach roll tackle. We don't spend a lot of time on roll tackle, but what ends up ultimately happening is um, you're going to get caught in a situation where you got to roll, and it's really about force distributor more than anything else. So if, if you can control the force, uh, like again, mass times acceleration, if we can control the force and work it backwards, we're not going to roll it. We're not going to really even want to roll it. We want to finish on top, and we want to um, face the goal line. But in a situation where the force is working away from us, we have to kind of – we call it drop in the anchor, which is we want to get both of our hips into the ground and end up back on top. So yeah. that's my deal. So this is the coach like, – like I said, this is a lot, right? And this is more like the along the lines of like the – you know, when we talk about when we're in the playbook and we do it, but like what are the coaching sound bites? You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. our coaching sound bites ultimately become like stay as big as you can for as long as you can, mm-hmm. right? And so we want to get square. We want to stay big. If all those three things happen on the side, I call that a triple connection, right? If I'm if I'm going ahead and make shoulder contact, my feet are in the ground, I'm making shoulder contact, and my hands are on the football, that's the triple connection together. So we ultimately our goal is to get the triple connection together with it too. So that's like a, this is triple connection to me. You know what I mean? So like I'm rooted in the ground, feet are on, and I'm working towards the football, and you see there's a ball disruption. Uh, here's Levante David, who's a heck of a tackler. Um, I love this tackle study because I learned more about these guys. And I post like stuff and it's really interesting to really learn about their history and stuff too. But, mm. you know, it's funny too. You kind of see like, there's always kind of this little lineage, like, you know, the great programs have really great tacklers, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, right, it, right. It's, just, it's amazing how like the guys who win at the end of a college football season, like produce really good tacklers. Like, so that's the end of coaches tackling overview. We do have a part three coming out. So make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. That will be coming out later this week. Let us know what you think about this tackling system. And if you have some sort of similarities that you have in your system, let us know in the comments below. We try to get to all the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.